Thanks, Robin. Welcome to 1045 service uh, on this first Sunday of March. We cannot believe it is already March in uh, 2023. We give thanks to God that we have traveled together this two month and a new month with our lovely friend within this uh, Taramara congregation. I'd like to welcome Holy, uh, right, uh, being with us for the first time. We pray that you may find this time of worship uh, meaningful for your spirituality and we might have a chance to get to know you more after this. And welcome to those who are watching us on YouTube. Um, it's great to have you all this morning. I believe you have received the order of service today. And the first song today is Now Thank We All Our God. Thanks, Robin. worship God with our prayer of adoration, opening prayer. Let us pray. O God of generosity, your son taught us that the last will be the first, and the first will be the last. So help us when we are first to remember to care for those who are the last, and help us when we are last to remember that you are with us and you will provide for our every need. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's sing together. Um, please open your program if you just walked in. Our first hymn is hymn number 168, For the Fruits of All Creation. Thanks be to God.
Thanks again, Robin. And the Bible reading coming from Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16. Parable of the workers in the vineyard. The parable of the workers in the vineyard. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I'll pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you've made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I'm not being unfair to you, my friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Mrs. Smith, um, she was fumbling in her purse for her offering in the church and when she was doing that large television remote, remote control fell out and clattered into the aisle and curious congregation member sitting next to her, she bent over, picked it up and gave it to her and she whispered, do you always carry the TV remote control to the church? No, she replied. Then she said, my husband refused to come with me this morning and I figured this was the most evil thing I could do him legally. <laughs> Did you get it? Some of you get it, that's good. <laughs> Stuart would have been um, like that um, joke. In any sports game, whether it is tennis, rugby, in any other game, there is always game rule. Rule about such for how to score, how to serve, how to pass and kick. And there are referees and umpires to implement these rules for the players and the spectators in the game. Umpires, they make decisions to be fair for every player. Referees should, give, should not give any advantage to any one side or any one player. Referees' unfair decision really could spoil the whole game. Of course, they could make mistakes, but even small mistakes by referee can influence greatly to the whole game. In the industrial relation, these rules and regulations are also very important. There are minimum pay rates set by the government about casual, part-time and full-time respectively. There is a clear-cut pay rate for overtime, about weekend and public holiday. And all, all the workers are entitled to, entitled to have holiday and sick leave. And these difficult, different rules, different legal requirements, they aim to ensure the employers to be treated fairly, the owners and employees to do their job properly, and they could generate the best profit in a good working environment. When I was applying uh, to be a candidate for ministry to be accepted, Uniting Church has a quite a long process. Um, there's a certain program called uh, Period of Discernment. Um, Graham, you would know really well. Um, 
After that, I was um, given the time and from Sydney Presbytery back then. Um, you come to our committee, we, you meet with me, and it was a good conversation, I thought. But they told me after the interview, saying, I think you have a call, but we like to see you have different experience. Um, I was about 24, 25, just finished my master's degree at Sydney Uni, and I thought I was quite ready. Committee thought my whole experience pretty much in Australia, study. I did have uh, some casual job before, like working at factories and McDonald's and so on, but they like to see something else, long time, like full time job. It was about June, I think. So I thought if I start from June, that will be June next day. Another interview, say July, August, then there's a, another interview called Synod Selection Panels. And I thought this timeline would be very tough. And I, that, that moment I live in Newington Olympic Park, you may know IKEA, the Hongbush Bay, the Rose Shopping Center. It was about time they opened up this new um, big um, Swedish furniture company. And then I found a full-time job from the restaurant Bistro. There's a nice small restaurant. My shift starting early like 6.30, I received the delivery stock, you know, frozen fish and chips and all those boxes. <laughs> then I cooked the breakfast and so I was there 12 months and went back to the interview and they were happy back after that. Um, I had different experience. And while I was in IKEA, the diff in that job, I really liked when I had a weekend shift, Saturday, Sunday, and often Monday, I liked to have that long weekend because I have the weekend payment and the Monday um, public holiday um, payment. And I, I remember there's one year, Christmas was on uh, Monday, and the store was closed. So I got weekend payment. I didn't work on Monday, but I received that public holiday payment, even I wasn't there, which was fantastic. <laughs> Unlikely today's gospel story, in our world, in the area of sports, industry, uh, virtually everywhere, we strictly follow rules for the fair treat, for the workers, for the employers. And you may say it is unfair. It's not fair, you may say, when you read Matthew first. By most standards of justice, the laborers who worked longest in the vineyard, they were entitled to expect the largest amount of pay. Who started the latest and worked the shortest time really must be happy with small proportion of that day. I would have grumbled if someone who worked less, than, less hours than me, if they had same payment with me, I would grumble. And we get that um, grumbling, complaint in our verse 11. It says, when they re received it, um, they began to grumble against landowners. And think about this word, grumble, complaining. You may think of the book of Exodus. People of Israel grumbled about lack of abundant food. And one of the verse saying, in the desert, whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. In our reading today, people grumble about lack of adequate pay. In the book of Exodus, God provided manna from heaven. I found this picture, and that's quite a uh, good picture. People finding manna on the ground. Um, it was a sign of gracious abundance. In our reading, Master gives the same amount to those who have contributed less than others. But it is His right. It is master's right to be generous. In the wilderness story, God did not have to. God did not have to provide for the people. In the vineyard story, master did not have to be generous to the late starters. So I think we need something different perspective to approach. God operates by different criteria. His criteria is the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Children of Israel are on the move. They having fled Egypt at the time of Exodus. Now they are finding themselves in the wilderness, in uncertain, unfamiliar world. 
Food and drink run short. They wonder if they have been better to eat bread of Egyptian slavery than just die in the wilderness. So they grumble against God. In our reading, same kind of things happening. Those who work full 12 hours have seen one hour laborers get a full day's pay. And they grumble and both said, I have paid you proper agreed rate for the day. Why should you grumble if I choose to be generous to the newcomers? I choose to be generous to the newcomers. And when Jesus was saying that parable, it was response, in response to scribes and Pharisees, good religious people of his day. They were critical at Jesus for accepting sinners and tax collectors. And religious people felt they were far better than these outsiders and they were resentful at Jesus' assumption of equality. In the early church, this story was applied as a story about Jews and Gentiles. Uh, that picture, by the way, it is um, Paul is speaking at um, that Greek temple, talk, talking to the Gentiles. Jewish had been God's people for 2,000 years since Abraham. They have served God through the heat, through the burden of the day. And they thought they are the inheritor of that tradition, an inheritor of the service. But the Gentiles were newcomers. Therefore, Jewish Christian felt it was not fair that newcomers, Gentiles, should be given the same benefit, same status and blessings as those had been on God's people for centuries. But we learn from this parable that in the kingdom of heaven, there are no bonuses for overtime or long service. In God's kingdom, there are no higher public holiday payments, no weekend shift payment. And but in the church too, a person with the one gift has exactly the same status before God as the person with many gifts and many skills. A person who has been a leader in the church for many years has the same status as the person who has just come to church from last week. In the industrial standards, industrial criteria, if you do not get higher pay or greater recognition or fringe benefit, why would anyone do more than just minimum? So in order to understand this teaching of Jesus, we need to consider a new dimension beyond this industrial framework. New um, framework. You and I, laborers, we, you and I work, are the workers in God's vineyard. It is God who calls us. It is God who sets the terms of employment. We do not earn our own wages. What God offers is a free gift. Free gift indeed, the gift of his generosity, and this free gift offers salvation through Jesus Christ. Therefore, all we have, therefore, all given by God is God's favor. So, what can we complain about? What can we grumble about? None of us deserves the glorious future that God has prepared for us. So as we seek to live by and under the grace of God that he gives not because of how long you have been church, not because of how hard we have worked for him or how righteous, how spiritual we are or anything else, but simply because of his love and generosity then he will deal with us out of abundance of his blessing and grace. Those who are last will be first, and those who wish to be first will be last. There is nothing, nothing that can be fairer than that. So let us thank God for His goodness. Let us thank God for His generosity and for His grace. Amen. But before we go into the Holy Communion, we have a uh, we are taking up offering as we sing, which sing, hymn number 640 uh, kneels at the feet of his friends. And when Eric is ready, um, he will be moving around uh, receiving our offering. So let us sing.
together as we take in our Loving God, help us to remember that when we are first, that we can remember last those who need our help, those who need our care and, uh, and our thought. And we pray that these money, gifts, and time we bring maybe we can be used for those who um, some reason just feel like they are the last in our society. We may hope, pray that by these gifts and our love, they may feel that they can be first and they, uh, they may have somebody around them. Uh, praying for them can help them and we can all be first as we support one another in your name. Uh, so we dedicate our offering as we thank you for your blessings upon our lives. Amen. Amen. This is the table of Christ set with tokens of grace and hope. So come. Come ready to receive for all, for all our welcome at the feast of love. For there is one love, one body, one spirit, one baptism, one faith, and one God who is above all and through all and in all in all. And this God has gifted us each other and called here to the community of grace and hope. The responsive um, liturgy of your response will be black, italic words on the screen. Eternal God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift, lift our hearts to God. God. Let us give thanks who is wisdom and love. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. It is it is right to give our um, 
that's in place. So in this place, what for for what are you thankful? For what are you thankful? It is right. I, we praise you, gracious God, for of mercy and love. For all things come from you. We praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, the living word. Hope for the world who calls us to follow. We praise you for your spirit, for taste of your future, that we might not lose the way as we look for renewal of all creation. And we praise you for this community, community around us, companions for our journey. And so we remember that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he thanked, thanked you as you have thanked you. He broke and gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drunk, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It will be poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. With this bread and this cup, we do as our Savior command. We celebrate life Christ calls us into and we lean into the reign of Christ. We pray that you would come and be present with us now we say together. Let's say um, responsibly this prayer. Come Holy Spirit, enliven this bread and wine. May, May it be for us the body and the blood of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, enliven this community. Make us the body of Christ. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Come. come. Christ is bread of life, food for healing and wholeness. And Christ is cup of hope, wellspring of resurrection. So these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Please receive this holy sacrament of body and blood of Christ and feed on it in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. As Graham uh, distributes elements, bread and uh, grape juice, please wait until everyone receives so we may eat the bread together and drink the cup together. Please come, Holy Spirit. Say one more prayer as, as Graham moves on. Prayer of the communion. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, you have called us to share in God's story of hope, and so we offer ourselves to its telling. We pray that you breathe your life through ours, that the story may continue on in us, continue through us, until the world is remade. Amen. May the old 
benediction. As we have worshipped, so we take our worship into the world. When we are able to give generously, we give to others. Where we are able to work with our zeal, we labor enthusiastically. When we are able to support others, we carry their burdens. God of generosity, Son of the all endeavor, Spirit of support, bless us this day and always. Amen. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep, able to keep you from falling, and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceed. Thank you for joining our worship. We hope to um, see you all um, next time when you look at our uh, YouTube. And blessings to you all. Bye for now. Thank